Welcome to Byte Pro. So today we're going to be configuring Apache Guacamole version 1.2, which came out in June of 2020 on a CentOS 8. Now I have a, a minimal, uh, clean, fresh install of CentOS 8 running on this VM that I'm SSH into, uh, just for your reference. Also in the description, there's going to be a link to my website where I have a written guide with all of these commands available, so you can just copy and paste them. Uh, I highly recommend you do use the website and use that guide to copy and paste. Uh, there's a pretty good chance if you try to type all this stuff by hand or manually that you're gonna make a mistake. And if you make a mistake, there's a pretty good chance that at the end of this that something's not gonna work correctly. Uh, so with that aside, let's go ahead and uh, begin. So to start, um, just to set the host name on, uh, on a CentOS machine, by default, it's going to be localhost probably, but to change it, you just run hostname ctl set hostname guac. Now, I already did that, um, so mine set the guac, but I'll pick whatever you want to name your machine. Next, what we need to do is we need to run um, dnf install, and we need to install the Apple repository. Um, Apache Guacamole has a bunch of dependencies and packages it relies on, and a lot of those are in the Apple release, so we're going to head and uh, install that. Alright, now what we're going to do is just run update real quick. And this is going to make sure that we have all the latest patches and packages installed for our system. Now, I just ran this a little bit ago to save time, but if you're just doing this for the first time on a clean install, this is probably gonna take quite a while to go and get all those packages, so make sure it runs all the way through and finishes. Next, um, we're gonna need a third-party repository. Um, Apache Guacamole relies on the FFmpeg library, and by default, that is not included um, in CentOS 8's base or Apple repos. So we're gonna use RPM Fusion. They do provide this package for us. All right, now what we need to do is enable a couple other repos. So one of them is Power Tools. So go ahead and run this command. And we also need to enable the, the Devil repo. All right. Next, we need to go get all the different packages that Guacamole relies on. Um, there's a whole bunch. Again, just copy and paste this from the website. Don't try to type this by hand. And we're going to go ahead and let this run. It's probably going to take quite a while to fetch all these. Okay. Now that all those packages are installed, we just have a couple more things we need to we need to install and set up before we can actually go on to configuring Guacamole itself. Um, so with CentOS 8, Apple is not fully built out still. There's still a lot of missing packages, um, and they're continuing to add more and more as time goes on. But there's two um, packages that are associated with Telnet that Guacamole relies on, and they're not yet in CentOS 8. So we're going to just manually install them from CentOS 7's uh, repos. And then finally, um, as far as other packages we need are um, Tomcat, which is the, uh, the web server that Guacamole is going to utilize, isn't yet released as well for uh, CentOS 8. So we're going to install a third-party repository that's going to handle this for us. And then we can just run dnf install tacy tomcat9. Okay, so now we should have all of our packages and dependencies out of the way at this point. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use wget to download the uh, guacamole server. Um, now that we have that source code, we're gonna we're gonna untar that gz file. And we're also gonna download using wget the uh, guacamole web application. All 
Now we're gonna um, change directory into the uh, the guacamole server folder. Whoops. Now we're gonna run configure, which is uh, it's basically gonna run a bunch of checks for us because we're about to compile the uh, guacamole server from source. And so this is just running through and it's gonna make sure that we have um, all the dependencies required. So now that we're at the end here, um, it's saying, you know, it's ready to type make, make. We can go through here and just do a real quick check. So what we wanna see is yeses on all of these. Um, Winsock32, that's, that's a Windows library. Don't worry about that. We're compiling on Linux. Um, and then we should have yeses here as well. So this is gonna show you the protocols that Guacamole is gonna be able to communicate with. If you have no's for any of these, go back earlier in the video or to a previous step in the guide and just make sure you didn't miss anything. If you have a note next to one of these, you're, you probably missed a package or a dependency of some kind. So now that we're ready to go, we can simply type make install. And this is gonna actually start compiling our application from source. All right, so now that we're done compiling, we're gonna run ldconfig, and then we're gonna go back to our home directory. Now what we need to do is um, enable Tomcat, MariaDB, and the guac uh, D service to automatically start. So systemctl enable is just gonna allow Tomcat 9, MariaDB, and that guac service to automatically start each time we reboot or power on our system. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our guacamole web application into our Tomcat 9 uh, web apps folder. Now what we need to do is configure our firewall. Uh, CentOS by default has a very strict firewall. Um, it essentially blocks everything except for SSH by default. Um, so what we're gonna do is enable uh, a firewall rule to permit traffic. So firewall attack CMD, we're gonna make this rule permanent, which means it will persist across uh, reboots. Um, and then we're gonna add the port 8080, which is what Tomcat operates off of. Uh, and now for that firewall rule to actually take effect, we need to reload the firewall. Okay. Now uh, we need to create two folders inside the uh, tomcat 9guacamole folder. So we're gonna create an extensions folder and a lib folder. Now we need to download the, uh, the MariaDB uh, Java connector. And what this does is it allows uh, guacamole to communicate with the MariaDB or MySQL backend that we have here. And uh, we're gonna copy that jar file into the guacamole lib folder we created. Now we need to um, wget the guacamole JDBC And we need to untar it. And uh, what we then have to do is we have to copy uh, this jar into our extensions folder. All right, so now we're good. We can go and start MariaDB and start Tomcat. Next, um, we're gonna run MySQL secure, and this is gonna configure our, our MariaDB or MySQL database uh, to be a little bit more secure instead of in a you know development mode. So it's gonna ask for our current root password. We just installed, everything's clean, so we have none. If you already have a password here, use that, but I don't have one, so I'm gonna choose enter for none. And 
Why for yes, I do want to set a root password. Whatever you pick here, just make sure you remember it because we're going to need it um, in some subsequent steps. Yes, we want to enable or remove anonymous users. Yes, we want to disallow root login remotely. And yeah, we're going to remove those test databases. And finally, yes, we're going to reload our privilege tables. Okay, so now we need to log in to MySQL. and use that password that you just created a second ago. Now this uh, SQL command we're about to run, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a database called GuacDB. And this is where Guacamole is gonna store um, all of its configuration data. So things like the different connections you have, whether you know, you're, if you're using SSH, you know, what port it's supposed to SSH into, username and password. Um, it's going to store all the different settings that Guacamole needs to operate. Um, so now that we've created that database, we then need to create a user account for Guacamole to utilize to authenticate into this SQL database. So all this is saying is, you know, on the Guac DB, create a user called Guac user. And then this is the password Guacamole would utilize. So Right now, if you're going to do this, I would change this to whatever password you want Guacamole to use. I'm going to leave it how it is here for this demo, but pick something more secure and stronger. Now we're just going to flush our privileges and we're going to quit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to wget the Guacamole client. And we're going to untar that. And so this next step, uh, inside the client, there's a bunch of SQL instructions in here, SQL commands that we're going to cat. So we're going to pipe these into here. And it's basically what this is doing is setting up all the structure for that database. So we created the user account, we created the database itself, but the, uh, the tables and all that aren't yet in, uh, in the SQL database. So, this is just a bunch of commands that are going to establish all that for us and set up all that, all those tables. And the password you're going to use here, that would be the password we set up earlier when we uh, picked that, that root password. Finally, we're going to make a folder inside the Etsy uh, directory called uh, guacamole. And then we're going to create a file called guacamole.properties inside of this guacamole folder. All right, so next up here, um, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So in this configuration file, it's going to have some parameters that guacamole is going to utilize. So again, the host name, you can leave that default. That's the port that MySQL operates on by default. And then that user, the uh, database name, the username, and the password. These are all the things we just talked about. So if you picked a different password for your uh, that guac user we talked about, go ahead and put whatever that was in here. Um, also, we're just specifying here that we're going to use the MariaDB MySQL driver. Um, there's there's some other ones you can utilize like the actual MySQL driver, but uh, we're not going to be utilizing that in this guide. So to save this, you just press Escape and then colon WQ to write and quit. Next, what we need to do is just set some permissions for that file so that um, since it has a username and password in it, we want to make sure that uh, you know only select users are allowed to read and write to that, that file. And we're going to change the owner to Tomcat9. So that way only the Tomcat service can read from this directory and see those credentials. Finally, we're gonna create a symbolic link just from that guacamole properties into the, uh, the Tomcat folder. We also need to change the owner of this uh, guacamole web app to Tomcat as well. 
Now, since we're running CentOS, um, by default, it comes with SE Linux. And so what this is just saying is that Tomcat is allowed to use uh, its network connection to talk to the, the database that we set up here. So we're going to enable that. If you don't do this, um, you're going to get errors like, you know, no username or password, or incorrect username or password, because Guacamole is not going to be able to, to talk to that database back end. Um, SE Linux is going to block that if you don't run this command. And finally, we are going to um, run this command. This is again tied to SE Linux. It's going to allow um, this MySQL or the MariaDB Java client to have uh, sufficient permissions and accesses to, to work properly. And last, we just need to reboot. Okay, so we finished rebooting. Uh, now we should be able to actually go log in and uh, see our guacamole system. So we begin, just type in the IP address of the, uh, the guacamole uh, virtual machine or server or wherever you have it. Go ahead and type that IP address in. And then uh, it's on port 8080 and then slash guacamole. Awesome. So now to log in, by default, the, the default creds for guacamole when you first install it are going to be guac admin and then the same thing, guac admin. And that's it, we're in. So from here, you can go into settings and uh, you know you can configure your connections here. So this is how you would create a VNC or Telnet or whatever you want to use. And you can specify all those parameters in here. Um, again, Guacamole is an awesome tool. It's really useful. It's a little uh, tedious to set up initially, but it's a, it's a really, really great application. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. In my next video, I'll be showing how to enable um, SSL or HTTPS so you can allow, you can securely connect to your Guacamole server. So go ahead and stay tuned for that. Um, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments or uh, problems, please go ahead and uh, leave a comment below and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Thanks. See you all next time.